the weather's about to start cooling off. But, you know, Louisiana be lying. I probably have like five miles to empty, but I'm gonna try to go ahead and get to the gas station as quickly as possible. Then I need to go get me something to eat before I die. because I never had to change any clutches or transmissions, motors, anything like that because I bought it with 25,000 miles on it and I treated that car like it was my baby. I did routine oil changes on it, never changed anything else. Now that I think about it, all I did was modify the car and that brings me up to my first thing that I'm gonna talk about is whenever you modify cars, if you're new to like being a car enthusiast and things like that, it does mess with the reliability of the car and it tends to make the car not last as much as it probably could have from the factory but that also depends on how you treat it how you maintain the car uh, frequent oil changes and just make sure the car doesn't overheat or anything and other than that the, whatever car you get should last a long time i always ask myself like why is there this big huge debate whenever it comes to 2.0 owners and 3.8 owners and I'll never come up with an answer to that because if you ask me, both cars are great for what they both are. The 2.0s are for people who want like the boost feel or the boost sounds and that type of thing. Look at Steven, his C8 sitting out looking all good and spiffy. But like I was saying, the 2.0s, they are like the slower versions of them but they have a bigger aftermarket platform and more aftermarket support. And they tend to be a little cheaper whenever you buy them out anyways. So it's easy to pay off and that, that makes it like the better choice for a younger enthusiast. The 3.8 such as the one that I'm driving now and my previous one, they have a little bit bigger motor and that's personally what I like. I like the way they sound. I like the torque that they have. And if I ever wanted to boost it down the road, then it would tend to be a little faster than the 2.0 as long as I build the motor because they are only rated for around 500 horsepower or so. But I believe we can all agree that there's no replacement for displacement. I personally have never owned a 2.0 Genesis, so I don't actually know how that is to own. But with the 3.8s, you do have to watch for oil consumption because they tend to, if they don't leak oil, they do burn it a little bit. And I have a catch can right now. I actually need to check that thing out. But I've been driving with it for about two weeks now and it should have a little oil in it because for some reason, the cars just like to drink up some oil. Like each oil change, I find myself around a quart lower. So that's about every 5,000 miles. But as long as you're monitoring your oil levels and the oil temps and all of that stuff, then the Genesis would be a very nice platform for you. I do know that the BK2, the 2013 BK2 models, do come with like a faulty transmission or something like that with the manual. So uh, be on the lookout for that if you're ever in the market to get one. Those are the less desirable ones. And so you're gonna be finding more of those whenever you're trying to buy it if you're not trying to spend a pretty penny on one. From what I know, it's something dealing with the synchros or bushings or whatever. It's something dealing with the transmission that makes it not want to shift great from first to second. And, ooh. I'm just glad that's something I don't have to deal with because I have the 2014 model. Ooh, finally pulled up to the gas station. 
glad I didn't run out of gas. I just got me some food. So I'm definitely about to end this video soon. <laughs> but yeah, in my opinion, the only downsides to having a Genesis, well, a 2013 or a BK2, however you want to put it. But uh, the only downsides to having one is one, the oil consumption. Two, maybe the second gear lockout or whatever you might want to call that. And three, if you don't have to deal with those things, then you still have to deal with that it's a Hyundai. So you might get a little backlash about that. But other than that, I would recommend these cars. I love them. This is definitely one of my favorite cars on the planet. I don't know why, but it's a it's a nice entry level car. And uh, I can't complain about it. A lot of people did give me backlash for getting rid of my Terminator Cobra for this car. But to be honest, I don't really care. And uh, not to bring that back up or anything, but like I said, this is one of my favorite cars. I love the way it looks, the interior, the exterior styling, the sounds it makes. And it's overall just like a great enthusiast car. You can do a lot to these cars, even though there isn't a bunch of aftermarket support for the 3.8s, but it's enough to make you love the car, and that's one thing I like about it. It's unique. I know this video was shorter than they usually are. Some of y'all may like it, some of y'all may not, but let me know that in the comment section below. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, you might wanna go ahead and do so because I do post content. I try to post now, ever since I started this whole full-time YouTube thing every three days so you should see a video come out every three days if you don't then get under one of my videos or one of my posts on instagram and be like hey pj you're not following the schedule and uh make sure i'm on top of that but other than that if you like the video go ahead and give it a thumbs up leave some positive vibes in the comment section below and i'll catch y'all in the next video but always remember to do more be more believe more and achieve more and i thank y'all for watching